It's 2013. Yokai Watch launches on the Nintendo 3DS and will soon take Japan by storm. The surprise hit would later be brought to the West as well, in the hope of attracting even more gamers to the brand. What Level 5, the developers of the game series, didn't realize at the time, however, was that the fall of Yokai Watch would come just as quickly and unexpectedly as the big boom. Yokai Watch was first announced at Tokyo Game Show 2011. Level 5's goal with the game was to create a long lasting, successful franchise. The game was supposed to be a part of the successful Doraemon franchise, until they later decided to make it something unique. Yokai Watch is about befriending yokai and fighting hostile yokai with them. Yokai are Japanese mythical creatures based on legends and myths, so the in game yokai are actually based on real legends and not just completely made up. When the first game of the series was released in Japan for the Nintendo 3DS in July 2013, however, the game wasn't particularly successful. With just 50 50,000 copies sold, Yokai Watch at best had a mediocre start, and Level 5 was probably not satisfied with the initial sales figures. But that didn't stop them from continuing to invest in the Yokai Watch franchise and expand the brand. Then, when the Yokai Watch anime launched in January 2014, the brand gained much greater popularity, and a month later, in February 2014, Yokai Watch had already sold around half a million copies. Over the next few months, the anime became increasingly successful and even surpassed the Pokemon anime, which is quite popular in Japan in popularity. When the sequels Yokai Watch 2 Ganzo and Yokai Watch 2 Honke were released in July 2014, the first game had already sold more than 1.2 million copies. The original 50,000 units sold thus quickly became a million seller, and the second installment, which initially consisted of two games, completely smashed the original game's sales numbers. Yokai Watch 2 sold 1.3 million units within the first week alone and was also able to help the sales numbers of the 3DS. Thus, it sold more copies within the first week alone than the first game sold in an entire year. Since Level 5 was already somewhat following Pokemon due to the two games system, they thought, okay, if it works this well, we'll make an extra version too. Half a year later, in December 2014, Yokai Watch 2 Shinuchi was released, a slightly expanded version of the original game. It included new quests, content from the successful Yokai Watch movie, new yokai, as well as other things. This game was another huge success, selling 1.2 million copies within just two days. It was clear by now that the Yokai Watch fever had broke out in Japan and that there would be no cure for it anytime soon. Level 5 used this opportunity and expanded the brand further. Mangas, toys, smartphone apps, plushies, board games, everything you could possibly imagine actually existed. Even a Yokai Watch Just Dance edition. No, I'm not joking. Japan became a Yokai Watch paradise within just one year. You could find something Yokai Watch related on almost every corner. And all this stuff wasn't just produced in the hopes that someone would buy it. It was super successful with fans all over the country and was often sold out nationwide. Merchandise sales generated 55.2 billion yen in 2015 alone. That's the equivalent of of almost half a billion dollars. Yokai Watch had become the new Pokemon, and many started calling it the Pokemon Killer. The success of Yokai Watch was so big that it far surpassed the game series. The Yokai Watch Guidebook became the best selling book in Japan in 2014. This was the first time since the measurement of book sales that a guidebook became the best selling book of the year. The first anime opening theme. Gera Gera Po made it into the top 50 of the annual music charts, and the first Yokai Watch movie had the highest number of ticket sales since 2004. Level 5 had done it. Despite the initial weakness of Yokai Watch, it managed to turn the brand into a new giant, and 2015 was going to expand the series immensely, yet again. While 2013 and 2014 offered Yokai Watch fans many interesting experiences through Yokai Watch 1 and Yokai Watch 2, which consisted of three different versions, Things looked a little different in 2015. At the end of 2014, the third version of Yokai Watch 2 had just come out, and a Yokai Watch 3 was not yet ready for the market. That didn't mean, however, that 2015 was going to be an empty year for Yokai Watch fans. Among other things, Level 5 had released the new Yokai Watch spin off, Yokai Watch Busters, in two different versions. The second season of the anime was airing, and the smartphone puzzle spin off, Yokai Watch Puni Puni, was released. Thus, many Many new, different experiences were offered to Yokai Watch fans, and due to the various genre changes of the spin-offs,
lives. New audiences were also attracted to the franchise. Yokai Watch Busters, for example, was generally well received by fans and critics, and was often praised for its good and fun gameplay. Fans also liked the fact that you could interact with the yokai in different ways, and that it was a fresh take on the game's systems. Level 5's mission at the time seems obvious – to further increase the already big market share, in order to make the brand even better known than it already was. And for that, one important thing was still left to do – expanding to the West. While all the spin-offs had certainly helped to make the brand even more popular in Japan, it was the move to America and Europe that was the biggest hope. Should Yokai Watch be as big a hit in the West as it was in Japan, they would have really managed to take the whole world by storm. Level 5 announced in April 2015 that Yokai Watch would also launch in the West, and at E3 2015, the game was given a very big stage. An audience of millions was focused on Yokai Watch, and despite the fact that the game series was already a giant in Japan. Almost no one here had heard of it before, and gamers weren't exactly excited. The game didn't appeal to many people, and most people didn't know what a phenomenon it had become in Japan. But as we all know, first impressions can be deceiving. When the game was finally released in America in November 2015, and in Europe in April 2016, there was no hype behind the franchise, and it struggled to gain any traction. Level 5 therefore refused to give any information information about the sales figures for some time, but revealed them after a few months anyway. It managed to sell 400,000 copies in America within the first few months, which was far below Level 5's expectations. But Akihiro Hino, CEO of Level 5, assumed that this would change in half a year to a year, as the start in Japan was also rather slow. What no one could have known at the time, however, was that Yokai Watch had already peaked, and that the fall can come much faster than you could possibly imagine. 2016 was set to be a big year for Yokai Watch, while 2015 saw a few spin offs as well as the expansion to the West. 2016 saw the all new Yokai Watch 3, as well as the tactical role playing game Yokai Zangokushi, awaiting Japanese Yokai Watch fans. Yokai Watch 3 was, who would have thought, once again made available in two versions Yokai Watch Sushi and Yokai Watch Tempura. Among other things, Yokai Watch 3 added new battle systems, two main characters, new areas, and lots of new yokai. However, when Yokai Watch 3 was released in July 2016, it didn't have the same impact as the previous game. In just two years, interest had already dropped by about 50%, and the game managed to sell about 600. 30,000 copies within the first week, which was still great, but certainly alarmed level 5. Such a big difference in interest in just two years is anything but normal, and even the extra version, released later in the year, Yokai Watch Zukiyaki, could not generate nearly the same amount of excitement as the extra version of Yokai Watch 2, and sold about 338,000 copies within the first week, which was about a quarter of the extra version of Yokai Watch 2. At this point, for sure, level 5. I've realized that the big Yokai Watch boom was already over, and that the interest could not be sustained. In the years to come, they tried desperately to win back fans in Japan through many new spin offs new anime seasons and new merchandise, but for the most part in vain. The expansion to the West was also anything but successful. While the sales figures of Yokai Watch 1 in the West were below expectations, they were at least not a disaster. However, the subsequent games failed to generate the same interest, and the hoped for excitement never happened in the West. Unfortunately, no official numbers are known about the sales figures of Yokai Watch 2 and Yokai Watch 3 in the West, but the mere fact that they were never announced is generally a bad sign. Yokai Watch 3, for example, is also quite valuable, as only a few copies of the game were even sold. But not all hope was lost yet, because Level 5 still had an ace up its sleeve to recapture both Japan and the West. Yokai Watch 4 While Yokai Watch 1 to Yokai Watch 3 were released on the old Nintendo 3DS, Yokai Watch 4 was set to run on the brand new Nintendo Switch. Yokai Watch 4 launched two years after the launch of the system, in hopes that the new system would restore the series to its former glory. Rather, it confirmed the suspicions that even the biggest Yokai Watch fans must have had at the time. The game series was on a serious decline. Despite the huge popularity of the Nintendo Switch in Japan, Yokai Watch 4 
sold just 150,000 copies in its first week. Even over time, interest could not be increased, and it ended the year with just 291,000 copies sold. A new negative record for the series. The slightly expanded Yokai Watch 4 Plus Plus, released later in the year, was also a big disappointment, selling just about 10,000 units. From peaking at 1.3 million in the first week, to a low of 10,000 in the first week. A drop of more than 99%. As a result, the English version for Western markets, already announced in early 2019, never came out, most likely due to the low sales in Japan and the generally low interest in the West. American and European Yokai Watch fans have often tried to bring the series back under the hashtag Save Yokai Watch and also with petitions, but to no avail. In the end, the market decides. And the market decided that not enough people are interested in Yokai Watch. Since then, no announcement has been made for a Yokai Watch 5, and it is questionable whether there will be another game in the series. We are therefore currently in the biggest period without a new Yokai Watch game, whether mainline game or spin off. But how did it actually come to this? How can it be that within only a few years such a strong fall happened? How can it be that you take a country by storm only to almost disappear completely? How can it be that Yokai Watch now seems to be dead? To answer these questions, we should first answer the question of why Yokai Watch was so popular in the first place. And that question is actually harder to answer than you might think. Why exactly Yokai Watch ended up being such a huge success is unclear even to level 5. But both level 5 and marketing experts have some theories about it. Level 5 CEO Akihiro Hino assumed that the characters and situations in Yokai Watch were very appealing to children. Also, collecting these mythical creatures was something that had not been done before and had a strong connection to Japanese culture. Moreover, one should not ignore the fact that Level 5 also ran a strong marketing campaign. And even if you wanted to, you could hardly avoid Yokai Watch. Through the games, the anime, the manga, board games, plushies, and much more, Yokai Watch became truly omnipresent for some time. But perhaps that was exactly the reason why Yokai Watch ultimately fell so much in the end. Level 5 had massively oversaturated the market in a very short time. Every year, several games came out. Extra versions launched only a few months after the original games. There was new merchandise pretty much every week, and the cash cow was milked as much as possible. This is called consumer fatigue, because too much content is offered in too short of a time. It also doesn't help that the games didn't exactly reinvent themselves, but made use of the same systems for the most part, so that some fans felt after playing maybe one or two games that they had already seen everything that the game series had to offer. It should also be mentioned that Yokai Watch was in direct competition with Pokemon, and Pokemon was a much stronger brand than the new Yokai Watch. By the time Pokemon Sun and Moon came out in 2016, Japan was excited for Pokemon and no longer for Yokai Watch. Why Yokai Watch failed in the West can probably be explained by the lack of of relevance. While yokai are part of Japanese culture, no one in the West has probably ever even heard the term yokai, and the myth-based ghosts would simply be seen as monsters. Interestingly enough, Level 5 seems to have realized this too, which is why they shifted the setting of Yokai Watch 3 to America, where you then find American yokai based on elements of American culture, such as baseball or superheroes. Without knowing for sure, I would argue that this was a deliberate marketing move to push the series in the West, which we all know didn't work out in the end. It should also be mentioned that there simply wasn't the same level of marketing as in Japan. Nintendo had helped as a publisher for the Western markets and also promoted the games, but it was never as omnipresent as it was in Japan. At least the anime did quite well in the West, and surprisingly, Yokai Watch 1 sold quite well in Europe, but apparently not enough to keep the series alive. And all these things eventually led to the death of Yokai Watch, a series that took Japan by storm and then disappeared almost completely.